The Convo portable power stations come with a real 30 amp car charger. And in this video, I am gonna go ahead and install it and give you guys some tips along the way. Hey everybody, welcome back to Random Fix. So these are gonna be the Convolt units. I got the four kilowatt unit here and the three kilowatt unit here. And both of these come with the specialized car charger. And instead of using your traditional car lighter chargers like these that only put out maybe 100, 120 watts, this particular unit puts out over 400 watts and it is a smart charger so basically it can go ahead and take care of the units and make sure everything's working perfectly so in this video today we're going to be installing this in my van here and i'm going to give you guys some tips along the way if you guys are brand new to the channel and you guys like these sort of diy tutorials where i save you guys a bunch of time and help you avoid some headaches make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button and smash on the notification button as well so anytime i post videos you will go ahead and get notified and now let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to go and install this and what it comes with. So this is the main charging unit right here. It comes with this really nice XD90 connection cable that runs between the charger and the portable power station itself. And these are very good quality. They have some sort of protective layer on the outside. So you can easily run this and you really don't have to worry about this cable getting damaged as much as it's protected. And we get the positive cable as well that has a fuse and a see-through window. So I can actually check to see if the fuse is blown, if I ever run into any sort of complications. And it is definitely quality. I went ahead and took this apart and this is completely serviceable. So it comes with a negative lead as well. It also comes with a lighter adapter. And this is really nice because it's going to allow me to turn the unit on and off. And this is very simple to go ahead and install as it comes with this quick connector, which basically allows me to go and lift up this lever. And then I can slide the wire in there and then just go ahead and lock it back down. And it's definitely good quality. And depending on the level of install and how clean you want to go with this, you're going to need some tools. And I'm going to show you guys my setup first and how I'm planning on doing this. And then I'll give you guys a few variations. So you're gonna need some tools and I have some basic screwdrivers. I have a multimeter here if you wanna make sure you're getting a good ground as I don't wanna go and make any additional holes in the body. And I'm gonna use a pre-existing hole for this. Additionally, I have zip ties. I'm gonna go ahead and really make sure everything is nice and clean. And let me show you guys how I'm gonna go ahead and execute this. M most importantly, I have to get this in first. So my idea is to go and tap this right into the positive here on the battery and then go run it inside. And I'll show you guys the course of the wire or I can come down to the alternator and actually go off the positive of that. On this particular vehicle, that is a lot more complicated. So I'm gonna be going with the easy route. And remember when the vehicle is not running and I do not have that button engaged, it will not be draining the battery. And let's take a look at where this is gonna be running on the inside of the vehicle. My very first idea was I was gonna run underneath. However, I found a easy entrance and I already have a screwdriver in place there. And let me see if I can get the camera to focus on it. There's a screwdriver tip protruding out right where my finger is. Let's take a look at that on the inside of the vehicle now. So I'm inside the vehicle and this is the screwdriver I have punctured through the firewall. And there's a boot there and I did not cut it. Basically, I got the screwdriver nice and hot. And then I went ahead and just poked it through. And the advantage of getting this hot versus making a tear with a utility knife is this is not gonna keep spreading. That's why I got the tip nice and hot. And once the wire is inside, I'm gonna go and zip tie it up top, run it down these trim pieces, basically tucking it in along the way. And back here, I have the stone go seating. So I actually have a specialized compartment I can put this in. And I normally keep the portable power station in the very back of the van. And I have traveled with the three kilowatt unit to Canada that way, and it worked out perfectly. So inside, I have plenty of room to go ahead and get the charger into here. And I wanted to avoid damaging the wire. 
So what I have done is I've already made a pre-existing small hole right there as well as on the inside lip right here where I'm touching. So the wire is not going to be damaged. And this is the ground I'm going to be using inside this compartment for the ground. So I don't have to make any extra holes. And I did use some sandpaper in this wire wheel to make sure that that surface is going to be a good contact point. And I have done this for the screw here as well. I went ahead and used it on sandpaper and the wire wheel here as well. Additionally, my vehicle has a cigarette lighter in the back and I can also do a hard wire setup by basically finding out which one of these is a positive and doing it that way. And for the purposes of this video, I'm going to make it simple and just show you guys the little adapter that it came with and we'll run that into here. And to make sure everything's nice and secure, I have made some small holes in this particular trim piece that are normally covered by the seat. And I'm going to go and mount that unit up top, nice and neat, along with the wires. So nothing is moving around in this compartment. And now let's go complete the install. The very first thing I want to do is run that positive wire into here. And to do that, I am going to go ahead and fish it through that firewall bushing. And I'm using the stereo installer orange flexible cord. You could just use a coat hanger if you don't have this tool. And there it is right there up top. And now it's gone through and protruded. I've got some electrical tape here. And now I can pull the wire through the firewall. The wire is through. With the rest of the wire run through the firewall, I'm going to figure out how I want to run this wire. And you want to make sure that the cable is routed in a way where it's not exposed to a lot of metal and a lot of engine heat, as cables do wear out over time. And this is the Anderson 120 connector I have. I actually leave it connected to my vehicle, as the Convolt unit makes a great jump starter as well. And now, I can go ahead and connect this if I was done with my install. You want to complete your install before you make the final connection here. There's the cable. And it is definitely long enough. Wires tucked away nice and neat. I'm going to just continue to tuck this positive lead down the trim piece here. All tucked away nice and neat. Now I just need to connect it to the unit. Now I need to go ahead and ground this out. And I'm going to be using that bolt. Make sure the connection is nice and snug for the ground. With the positive and negative connected, all I need to do is go ahead and use a Phillips to make the final connections. Positive is going to go in here. And they've done a great job with everything, including the wire. This was already pre-cut, so I just need to remove it, slide it into place, and get everything tightened up. Now I'm going to do the same for the negative here. The only thing now to wire up is going to be the remote trigger which is ultra easy. That is in there tight. Let's make the final connection. Now I got my ignition on and this is what normally triggers the cigarette lighter ports on this particular vehicle. And when I hit this button, I should have a green light on this unit, which is gonna be right here. So let's hit the button and the light is green. Red means that it's charging, and so all I need to do is go ahead and connect to this, and I'm good to go and charge the unit. Let me clean up everything, and I'll show you guys the final setup. So I'm all done with the install, and honestly, this takes about one hour to do. And I'm going to give you guys a recap of everything I've done, and just cover anything that I might have missed throughout the video. Let's go ahead and turn the camera around. Now let's take a look at the engine compartment. Here we have the wire mounted to the battery already and I routed it this way 
and zip tied it in a bunch of places so the wire is not going to be moving around as there's metal studs that are sticking out in the engine compartment and these can eventually damage the wire. So don't take any chances and leave yourself a little slack so you can service this fuse if you ever need to. And on the other side, I've done the same and basically secured everything. So I zip tied it right here, ran the wire down here and to the back to make sure that the unit is not just gonna keep rattling. I've gone through and secured it with the zip ties nice and tight and it does not move using the ribs of the actual unit and if I ever need to take the power out of my stone go area I've created a little hole back here where I can run the XT90 connection or a regular household electrical cord and that would allow me to get the power out of my stone go area or I can store the unit in the back like I've been doing all along. I've left the terminal screws facing out so I can come out here and adjust these after a couple of weeks as the screws do move around and eventually you do need to retighten them especially after you first set it up when you're trying to confirm that you have a good ground use a multimeter and confirm that there's no paint or any corrosion on the ground and what's really surprising about the convolt unit whether it's the 3 kilowatt, 4 kilowatt, or even the 6 kilowatt unit is it actually fits in my Dodge Caravan Stone Go seating compartment and the lid actually closes. So that's pretty cool. And the fact that they're including this smart, intelligent car charger is even nicer. And now let's go ahead and talk about the different routes you can take in case you're not able to do what I did here. So if you have a vehicle like a Mercedes Sprinter, you're going to have it even easier as the battery is located right here on that vehicle. So you don't have to go through the firewall. And if your battery is on the other side, you can do the same thing on the passenger side. And all you need to do is drop the glove box, which is really easy as most of the times so you just need to go ahead and push in and you can drop the glove box and get access to the bushing that holds all the wires in place and if that doesn't work for you you could also run down the length of the vehicle and lastly you can connect to the alternator and on this vehicle that is very hard to do so i didn't want to go that route but if you have access to a lift this might be very very easy and overall i'm really happy with the setup Now let's go ahead and take a look at the unit in operation. Let me turn the vehicle on. And I've decided to leave the car lighter adapter in the front. And when I push the button, the light turns red. And I heard the unit turn on. It says charging 90%, 48 minutes are left. I didn't have to do anything. And on most vehicles, if I turn the ignition off, the charging is just gonna stop. So charging has stopped. You don't have to worry about the car charger draining your battery as that's not gonna happen if you follow the tips in this video. It has been one week since I installed the car charger and I have some good news. And the good news is the Commvolt unit starts charging automatically whether it's on or off. And I like that because that's one less thing for me not to have to worry about. And at the end of the video, I'll leave you guys some videos where if you guys want to learn more about the Convolt unit, you'll find those same video links in the description box down below with some coupon codes. If there was something in this video that you feel that is important that I didn't mention, please let me know what it is so I can incorporate it into another video and make it a great day.